So, welcome back to the second lecture of the first week. So, in the last lecture, we were we was about the course introduction, and this lecture we will start seeing what do we actually do in NLP. Okay. So, so we ended the last lecture discussing what are the main goals of NLP. So, we talked about two different goals. Okay. So, we talked about the very fundamental scientific goal that is can we have a very very deep understanding of the broad language. So, and the second goal that we discussed was engineering goal that is can we design, implement and test systems that can process natural language and that can be used for practical application for our day to day life. And we also said that in this course we will mainly focus on the engineering goals of NLP. So, now, so, so we talked about engineering goals. Okay. Now, what are these goals? So, let us see with some examples. So, now my goals can be very, very ambitious. Okay. So, this is just a fun example. So, although, so we, we use Google translate every now and then. So, so getting a very, very good quality, a perfect translation is I will say a very, very ambitious goal. Okay. So, this is a snapshot taken from Google translate page. So, if I type Google is awesome, the, the translation comes out to be Google bhayanak if I go from English to Hindi. Okay. So, instead of saying something very, very perfect, uh, it come it turns out and, and, and says Google bhayanak that is not a good translation for this term. Okay. So, so, why is that? Because the, the systems that we have are not perfect, they, they have certain engineering solutions for towards their design but that may not be perfect. So, you will you will not get the perfect translation every, every time and that is what we should always know in back of our mind that yes, they are not the perfect systems. Okay. Similarly, this is another example. So, if you if you type in Google translate Google is cool, you will find some Hindi translation Google Shantay. So, now this is slightly better than the last one, but it is still not perfect. Okay. Why I am saying that this is slightly better than the last one? So, it is so it's shant one of the translation for the word cool. Okay. Yes, for a person who is cool, you can say that uh, cool can have one meaning of shant, okay. but that is not the meaning that is intended in this in this sentence, Google is cool. So, this is one of the problems that we will also see in this course that a word might have multiple senses. How do I know that what is the actual sense that is being used in this sentence? So, this is an actual engineering problem that has to be solved by designing efficient algorithms. Okay. So, now, so while I was talking about some of the translation that do not go very, very well, well in Google. So, I am just showing you some examples that yes, so this is not, not only the case with machines, even humans have made blunders when it comes to translation. Okay. So, in this slide I am showing you one particular slogan. So, that was with Pepsi. So, when Pepsi went to China for the first time for their campaign. So, they had this slogan on come alive with the Pepsi generation. Okay. And in China, they had to translate into Chinese and they ended up translating it as something that meant Pepsi brings your relatives back from the dead. Okay. So, now this looks very funny, okay. but if you look at the actual English sentence, you see that you can actually come up with a translation like that. You see generation is one to one with relatives and alive is one to one with back from the dead. Okay. So, this is some sort of uh, jugglery of these words, so that you again come up come up with a very very absurd sort of translation. So this is not only with the machines; even humans have made blunders. Okay. So yeah. So this was so previous one was with KFC. So Pepsi, and now you can see one with KFC. So again, when they went to China, so they had the slogan on finger licking good, and when they translated to Chinese, it meant we will eat your fingers off. Okay, so so again you can see the licking and and all this this they have a correspondence with the other translation. So yeah, so unless you know the other language, you will not be able to translate it perfectly, but just by using a simple dictionary, okay, it might give you a very very absurd translation. So yeah, what so yes, so there are many many examples. So for example, yeah, this is called as hand grenade, and yeah, so. Work in progress translated as execution in progress. And if you can 
if you if you know what is the meaning of execution that I am intending here. So yes, so again coming to the ambitious goals. Okay, so if you have heard about the the chatbot that Microsoft had uh, released the Tate tweets. Okay, so so it was taken down in less than a day. Okay, so why did that happen? So it it was responding to how how you humans were uh, communicating with it, and very soon it happened that it was giving very very absurd and and racist uh, tweets, and it had to be taken down. Okay, so it's a very nice tweet. So Tay went from humans are super cool to full large in less than 24 hours. Okay, so I'm not at all concerned about the future of AI. So again, that tells you yes. So it's very very difficult to develop a very very perfect system that that works for open domain conversation. Okay, so it's very so it's a very difficult problem to solve. So now, so with so we have some goals that are uh, that are very very ambitious. But there are very other goals, many other goals that are also very practical. Okay, for example, finding out if there is a if my query is incorrect, I am trying to correct it. Okay, so suppose in Google you type a query, so World Cup 2014. Okay, and you missed missed out on an R, so Google will give you some sort of uh, reply that okay, it's uh, are you looking for World Cup 2014? So instead of W L D did you mean W O R L D? Okay, so this kind of automatic query correction is a, a problem that you can think of solving by using NLP very very so in very very systematic manner. Okay, search engines and query completion again in search engines. So if you type some word like if you type start typing a query, so they also try to predict what is the complete query that you are uh, that that you are planning. So, if you type a query Google is, they will try to complete it with what you have queried before or what other users have queried with, with these terms. Okay. So, again, so the language modeling concept that we will discuss in this course goes behind all these completion tasks. Then there is a very, very important application on information extraction. That is, you have a lot of unstructured data in, in, in the sense of news report and whatever is. So, from where you want to identify what are the entities of interest and what are the various relations between these entities. Okay. So, for example, if you look at this text, so from here you can identify that Russell is a person who works on the post of president and general manager in the company New York Times newspaper. Okay. And he has just started his post at this moment. So, this information is available in the text data but in an unstructured format. Okay. So, now can I have an application or a system that can convert that in information to a very very structured format. So, like here you are seeing it in a data set format. Okay. So, you are finding out various persons to what company, what post they are on and did their tenure start or end. So, given lot of text data can I automatically build up such structured data sets of information and relations between entities. So, this is a task of information extraction and this is a very very practical goal of NLP. So, in this course we will also deal with this problem for certain lectures that how do I start extracting relations between entities from text data, what are the different algorithms that go behind that. Then if you have heard about uh, this course, so this is a recent news. So, in one of the course in, in GATEC, a professor used a chatbot as a TA for the course. Okay. So, so, what happened in the course? So, the student whatever queries the students were having, so they also designed a chatbot that can try to analyze the queries and try to give it some ready made answers. Okay. And it was interesting that after some training, the, the, the chatbot was so good that the students failed to notice. Okay. So, from the article, if you see that. Uh, after some time when the when the chatbot learned from the way students were querying and the responses that were ideal for the queries, it was giving answers with some roughly like 97 percent certainty. And and yeah, TH the actual the, the human TH would actually check the 
the response is first and they, then they will upload on, on the portal. So, this was again very, very practical goal. So, so you can contrast it with the open domain chatbot that we talked about. So, this was very, very domain specific chatbot. So, they were they built it only for their own uh, course. So, the domain was fixed to their course and the kind of queries you can expect are also limited in number to fixed to a certain domain. So, building this domain specific chatbots or conversational agent is a practical very, very practical goal and also coming up to, to be a important application in a recent age. So, thinking starting from the uh, conversation agent that can help you buy some product on an e-commerce website instead of you having to search everything. Okay. Can you just provide you your specifications to the chatbot and it can search a product for you or in, in the case of any flight booking system or banking system where you can give your queries and the chatbot can come up with the possible reply by looking into the documents and so on. And this is a practical application that that can be solved using using NLP. Then there is a problem of sentiment analysis. Again, lot of work has gone in NLP on this, and this is again a very very practical goal. So from your all your tweets, all your opinions and comments that you provide in social media, can a tool find out what are the various sentiments of users and and with that you can also find out are there some transitions in sentiments of the users over the years. Okay. A lot of research was done with recent presidential elections and in India the, the looks of elections a lot of research was done on, on finding out what are people's opinions and sentiments about various political parties and leaders. Okay. And many of them actually came across to even predicting who will be the winner of, of the elections. And there are many, many other goals. So, we talked about some interesting goals like building uh, say sentiment analysis, building domains specific conversational agents, okay, doing query completion or auto correction of the query. But there are many other goals like spam detection. So, so, so you will see that if you are using Gmail or any other web service, many of much of the emails go into the spam folder directly without even bothering you. Okay. So, so what is happening at the back end? So, once an email comes in, so the system tries to see is it a spam or not by doing again text analysis over there. And if it is a spam, it is not even shown to you to you in your inbox. It is not directly sent to some spam folder. So, spam detection is again a very, very practical goal in not only in your emails, also on uh, so with social media, even on, on tweets. YouTube comments, even YouTube videos, finding out what are spams is again very interesting and, and challenging problem. Then you have the problem of machine transition services on the web. So, think about opening a web page from some other country. Okay. So, like from China or Jap Japan, suppose you are, you are going to visit that country and you want to read that, that page. So, you can use Google Translate to load that page in English or any other language for you. Okay, and that, that is really, really helpful. So, again this is a very practical application where NLP is, is used. And finally, text summarization. So, given a, a big news article or scientific article, can I summarize that in short. And then there are many, many other applications where NLP is actually used. So, remember one of the, some of the previous slides that we saw in this uh, in this lecture. So, we found that NLP technology is not perfect. Okay. So, there are many places where uh, the systems make blunders. So, it is not perfect, but it is still good enough for many, many good applications. Okay. So, you can you can know that by so the way you are using it in your daily life. So, it, you can still use that in many day to day life applications and that is what is guiding this field that so, there are a lot of applications and that you can think of. So, can you come up with nice ideas, nice algorithms for solving that problem uh, and actually people would use that and benefit from that. Okay. So, a lot of applications you can think of where you can help the society by, by doing text processing and analytics. So, okay. so, so in, the, in the next, so in this, in this lecture we discussed what are some of the things that we do in NLP. So, next lecture onwards we will start talking about 
say why is NLP hard? What makes the language processing a difficult task to handle? Okay. Thank you.